Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Bible study. About a minute late, we're having some technical issues, I think, with the internet, and I think that's pretty common these days with as many people as are online at one time, but I'm glad that you have joined us, and we're going to take some time in the Word of God here in just a moment, uh, back in James chapter 1, continuing the study that we have been in, and uh, I want to just uh, remind everybody that today is Wednesday, and it is our midweek service time tonight, and I want to encourage you to join us on Sermon, Al Sermon Audio at 7 o'clock tonight as we have our service, <clears throat> and encourage other folks to get online with us. I think as the uh, staying at home continues on, uh, people are getting a little more uh, distracted about certain things, and uh, they're not as diligent as they were right at the very beginning. Uh, to really plug into the things of the Lord and stay connected to them. And I think it would do us well to, to just maybe remind some folks. And uh, I had a great time with our men last night uh, as we had our men's Bible study. And we used the Zoom app and we had a good number of fellows that got online and uh, we were able to interact. <clears throat> and that was a real blessing. If you know of anybody that would like to be a part of that, uh, that didn't receive an invitation to log on to it, let me know. Send me an email or a text message, and I'd be happy to include them in um, next Tuesday as we have our men's Bible study. And uh, again, I, I want to encourage you to just continue to be in prayer for our membership. Uh, we received word today from Paulette Robinson that Brother Aaron is very ill. He has a respiratory infection. And as you know, with his compromised health that's a very serious issue and we need to really uh, continue to keep them lifted up to the Lord in prayer and uh, and so uh, and, and continue to also pray for little Savannah Phoebe Allen's granddaughter which is also Tiffany's niece uh, who uh, thankfully does not have the coronavirus but has been diagnosed with a, um, a rare disorder that is a very serious uh, that's affecting her uh, greatly, and we need to keep uh, them and the family uh, in our prayers through these days. I know that we have several people that have been laid off of work, and they're uh, hopeful that we're going to be able to go back to work in short time, uh, but it's imposing a short-term hardship on them, and we just need to continue to uh, keep them in prayer as well. And uh, we're thankful for those that have remained steadfast in supporting the ministry through these days. And I know that God is going to bless and honor those who have chosen to do so. Uh, he's going to make that toilet paper roll go a little further than it would have gone before. <laughs> and maybe the milk jug will last just a little bit longer, kind of like the children of Israel in the wilderness. And this, you might be viewing this sort of like your own little wilderness experience. And uh, I'm not quite sure, but uh, uh, we're, uh, we're all navigating through this, I think, uh, better than some might have anticipated. And uh, I'm just uh, thankful to the Lord for His goodness and for uh, a family that has had a great attitude through this thing. And um, that makes it all a whole lot easier to navigate, uh, no doubt. And I trust that uh, you're finding the Lord's grace ever sufficient for you uh, day by day. I want us to uh, take a moment and go to the book of James in chapter 1, and we're going to continue where we left off there uh, yesterday, and uh, there are some things that I think we need to uh, continue examining as we uh, look at this admonition uh, from James to count it all joy when we fall into many different kinds of trials and tribulations, and this is a trial, it's a tribulation for a great many people, and yet we can count it joy in the midst of difficulty because we know that God is in control and he's working all of these things out for our good and not for our destruction. God has a good purpose in everything that he allows to come into our lives. And perhaps the good thing that's coming out of this for some is... Uh, it's simplifying your life, and it's bringing you back to the place where you recognize uh, how much you need to depend upon God. 
often that's what difficulties will do for us. It gives us that reminder of how we need to live by faith and depend upon God uh, for our everything on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes we just get so self-sufficient and operate so independently of the Lord that uh, we just start our days and we never give a thought to the fact that we need God. We just continue on because we're trained, we're educated, we have skills and abilities, and uh, we, we neglect to acknowledge that without God, we can do nothing. And yet that's in fact what the scriptures tell us. But the good news is that I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And so I need not despair. I just need simply to recognize the source of my strength. And I need to lean uh, more wholly upon him. And so in James chapter 1, the Bible says, beginning in verse 1 once again, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let's pray for a moment. Our Father, we are so thankful today that we have a God to whom we can turn in times of difficulty. And we're thankful that we can count all of the troubles of life as something uh, to rejoice in, as we know that God is in control and he's working all things out for the good of them that love him and for those that are called according to his purpose. God, for the many of our church family that have been impacted by uh, the loss of a job or perhaps an illness, God, I pray that you would just lift them up strengthen and sustain them. We pray especially today for Brother Aaron Robinson, that you would touch his body and heal him. We pray for little Savannah, God, that you would uh, be with her and raise her up and strengthen uh, her little body. And God, we ask that you might receive the glory and the honor. Bless now our study of your word this morning, we pray in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. As we consider what we have been reading here, we know that uh, James is writing to people that have been suffering. They have gone through uh, their worst nightmare scenarios. They've been separated from their loved ones. They've been driven from their homes and their jobs. They've lost everything. In many cases, they've lost their loved ones who have been stoned to death. In other cases, were burned at the stake thrown to the lions. Uh, there was a terrible persecution that was being brought to bear upon these people. And James is writing to them and saying, count it all joy when you fall into these many different kinds of trials and tribulations. And we've taken the time over the last couple of mornings to uh, take a little closer look at what exactly uh, he was saying and how we could rejoice even in the face of all of the difficulty that uh, assails us. And uh, certainly uh, there are many in this world that are going through difficulties that are far greater than anything that we're experiencing. Sometimes we just have to remind ourselves that as difficult as our lives may seem, there are millions of people in this world that would gladly trade places with us. And... Uh, we, we, we just have it so much better. Uh, those that are the poorest in our society by many world standards would be considered well off. If we have running water and electricity, if we have a finished home, 
uh, and if we at least can have access to public transportation and if we uh, have regular meals, uh, we're better off than more than 50% of the people that live in this world. And certainly uh, we need to be reminded of that from time to time. And uh, sometimes we think if the Wi-Fi goes out, you know, life is over. But the fact of the matter is that uh, if we didn't have an internet or if we didn't have cell phones, uh, that life would continue on and God would still be good. He would be gracious to us. And that really wouldn't fall within the pale of what might be termed as suffering. And so uh, I think that we've looked at this from a couple of different perspectives and we, we saw James acknowledging that he was the bond servant of the Lord, serving because he loved him, not because he was being forced to do so. And, and then we saw that the tribes were scattered abroad and it was suffering and persecution that drove them to the ends of the earth. But what seemed at the moment like the worst thing that could happen turned into the greatest thing that could have happened because it carried the gospel to the ends of the earth. And, and then there was a call to uh, surrender uh, these things to the Lord. When we count it as, as joy, we are putting God in his rightful place and we're saying, I'm not going to complain against what's happening that has been allowed of the Lord into my life, but rather I'm going to rejoice knowing that the sovereign God that allowed it had a purpose in it. And so I'm going to keep God in his place in my life. And then we see that this suffering leads us into a deeper and more meaningful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because it helps us to reflect over the suffering that he endured for us. And, and that helps us to really set in mind the things that, that the Lord has spoken to us of how much he really, truly loves us. And then we notice that these things are shaping us into the image of Christ. They're adding things to us that are lacking, that are the very attributes and virtues of the Lord Jesus Christ that need to be a part of all of our lives. And then we need to let God do what he, he will in our lives for these things. And, and, and that really is us submitting to a good God who has a good purpose through difficult things in our lives. And then we talked about the fact that this is a process that God has called sanctification, whereby that he set us apart for the purpose of growing us up in him and ultimately forming us into the image of God. The Bible says in 1 John 3, uh, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And uh, as we mentioned yesterday, it doesn't mean we're going to have a shepherd's staff and a long beard, wear a flowing robe and sandals. What it does mean is we'll begin to model all of the virtues and, and attributes, characteristics of our Savior in our lives. And so uh, we're thankful to the Lord and we rejoice in the Lord in knowing that he is through these times accomplishing a positive purpose for us. And I want us to look as we continue beyond verse 4 into verse number 5 and it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but there have been a lot of times in my life where that I've been faced with problems, with troubles and difficulties, and I just candidly did not know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that are around us who want to tell us what to do that think they know what we should be doing, but uh, we don't feel that same degree of confidence at times when we're in the midst of difficulty. And you know, I believe that when we're uh, emotionally wrought and when we're in the midst of suffering, before we begin making hasty decisions, we need to acknowledge that oftentimes at those moments we have uh, some shortcomings. And that is that we lack the wisdom to know exactly what we do next. What is it that I need to do next? And, uh, and so the Bible uh, says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Maybe 
uh, you're like millions of Americans who, when this whole thing began, wondered, what should I do with my money? Should I take it out of the bank and hide it in a mattress? Should I uh, cash out my 401k plan and, and just hide it and keep it for a rainy day? And, and we don't know what to do, and we're just trying to think thoughts through and try to make good decisions. But, you know, God has said when you have that shortcoming, that deficit in your understanding of what you need to be doing, I want you to come to me. I want you to talk to me about it. I want you to seek me. And how do we seek the Lord? Well, we ask him. And how do we do that? Well, we come to him in prayer. Now, sometimes uh, there's a deficit in our understanding. And then we see at times there's a deficit in our prayer life. And the reason is because of what's found in James 4, where the Bible says that ye lust, and in verse 2, and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. So if we lack wisdom, it's not because it's unavailable, it's because we're not asking in faith, believing that God would, would give it. Then the Bible continues there in James 4, 3, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. Sometimes when we go to the Lord in prayer, uh, we go with an agenda. So we say, well, I don't know what to do. So uh, what I know what I want. And so what we begin to do is we begin to ask God for the things that we want, thinking that that wisdom, that human wisdom, is really the thing that will guide us all the way through. So we begin to ask for the things that are outside of what God has planned for our lives. Um, I know that uh, you can turn on any radio station, the Christian radio station at times, or Christian television station, and hear people uh, trying to put forward the notion that God wants his people to be healthy, wealthy, and wise all the time. And that all you have to do is believe and have enough faith and that you're going to be wealthy. And that if you're sick or if you're poor, it's because you don't have faith. You know, it really astounds me the number of people that buy into that who have never just simply read what the Bible has to say. The Bible tells us about a man of faith named Moses who chose to suffer affliction with the people of God rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. His faith made the choice to move out of the palace, to turn away from the life of luxury and ease uh, in the palace in Egypt. We know that his faith led him to more of a life of privation and, uh, and dependence upon God. The Bible says in James chapter 2 that God has chosen the poor of this world who are rich in faith in James 2, 5. And so uh, those that are rich in faith, that doesn't always translate into riches. Here we find that those that are rich in faith were poor and they depended upon God for their daily sustenance. And so sometimes we, we come to the Lord and we have this agenda in prayer. God, I want you to give me this. Huh? God, would you do this for me? And we're asking amiss. And that means that we're asking outside of what the goodwill of God for our lives really is. And you know what? When we don't get what we want, sometimes we just quit talking to the Lord. We quit asking Him because we get frustrated. We wonder, does God not like me? And, uh, and yet, God wants to answer, and we need to understand that. And when we come to terms with the fact that our human understanding isn't going to serve us well in times of difficulty, when we come to terms with the reality that we may not always have the answers and we need to go to God for his wisdom, then that's when our prayers begin to move the heart and the hand of God. And so uh, when we come to terms with those shortcomings, with our personal deficits and are willing to come humbly before the Lord, uh, that's when uh, 
we recognize our need to call upon God. And, and, and when we do, he delights to come to the aid of his children. Uh, he wants to answer you. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That means when you don't know what to do, ask of God. And here's what the Bible says, that giveth to all men liberally. He doesn't just measure it out, a little dab will do you here and there. No, he's going to pour out the storehouse of his wisdom and knowledge unto you as we seek his face through prayer and we seek his wisdom in the word the spirit of god will illumine our minds to understand what it is that the lord is leading us to and what he desires for our life and so uh, he he loves to come to your aid the bible says in verse 17 of chapter 1 every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, either shadow of turning. So a good God is going to give good gifts. And sometimes that's in the form of the answers that we so desire in our lives uh, from the Lord. And, and I think that uh, the Bible says in, in Jeremiah chapter 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not see the lord wants to answer our prayers when we come humbly before him without uh, a predetermined agenda without trying to get on board with our plans but us trying to get on board with god's plans and so uh, when we pray not my will but thy will be done uh, thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven not in heaven as it is in earth and so sometimes we get that all twisted around in our thinking because we've listened to one too many televangelists and we've read too little of the scriptures and we need to come back to the place where we've got to get on God's program not try to get God on ours and so if you lack wisdom you don't know what to do then we need to go to the Lord in prayer and what he will do is he will give to you liberally and upbraid you not. In other words, he's not going to be upset with you when you come to him and you don't know what to do. It thrills the heart of God when his children come to him to ask for his counsel. And uh, it thrills my heart when my own children come to me and they say, Dad, uh, can I get some advice? I just need some help. I, I'm not quite sure what to do about this. And and that's like music in the ears of a parent when their kids come to them uh, desiring uh, some wisdom from them. But we notice this, that we see that sometimes we, we can identify shortcoming in our understanding and we come to the Lord. But notice when we come to the Lord, we come to a shepherd, a shepherd. And so here's what we see. He giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. So, listen, every one of us is going to come to a place where we recognize, okay, I need God's provision with wisdom, and I need God's direction for my life. What do shepherds do? Well, they lead. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And so uh, a shepherd will lead the flock uh, to the desired end. And so uh, we have a, a great shepherd who has given his life for the sheep. And, and he will lead us to where uh, he wants us to be. And uh, when we come to him with these requests, he's going to answer us. He's going to give to us liberally. He's not going to hold back. And I, I love a verse in Isaiah chapter 40. And uh, this really portrays the God that we come to as his sheep, needing his leadership and direction in our life. And in Isaiah chapter 40, at verse number 11, it says, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are young. 
You know, the Lord isn't going to be upset with you and say, you, I can't believe you don't know that. You mean I have to tell you? You've been with me so long and now I have to tell you? He doesn't say that. He's gentle. I think about when Thomas refused to believe that Jesus had raised from the dead. And uh, he said, unless I can uh, stick my fingers in the print of the nails in his hands and thrust my hand uh, into his side, I will not believe. And when the Lord appeared, he knew that Thomas had not believed him, but did he chide with him? No. He spoke gently to him. He said, Thomas, come hither. Put your finger in, in, in the print of the nails in my hand and thrust your hand into my side. And he was loving. And, and he said, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. But blessed are they which have they not seen, yet believe. And and he led him along gently. And that's what the Lord does for us when we come to him and we say, Lord, I just don't know what you want me to do. We come to a good shepherd who will carry us and who will lead us along gently and will lovingly entreat us. And that's who we're coming to. We're not coming to an angry God that's just waiting to clobber us because you know, we're asking him for answers to things that we probably should already know. No. He's a loving and a wonderful God. And then I want you to see that there'll be a satisfaction when you come to him because he says, I, I will give it to you. Um, again, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God will satisfy you and he'll be there and available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He that keepeth Israel and that keepeth you, the Bible says in Psalm 121, he never slumbers and he never sleeps. And so uh, we can always come to him knowing that we'll be satisfied with an answer and God will give to us liberally out of the abundance of his loving heart. and uh, But he wants us to come to him believing. And the Bible says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. God wants us to believe him. And today I want you to know, I believe that God is going to see us all the way through this coronavirus pandemic. I believe that God is going to allow those who have been laid off to be employed again. I believe by faith that God is going to allow those in the medical community to find uh, vaccines and medicines to treat uh, this, this drug. I, I just believe by faith that God is gonna grant the ability, the wisdom. God's going to uh, see his people all the way through this and sustain his church. I believe that today. I believe God is gonna take care of you I believe that God is able to satisfy you, to fulfill your heart, and to give you the comfort that you need through these days. I believe God will give you the resources you need when you're trying to teach your kids or your grandkids how to do their math and you can't figure it out. Uh, he'll, he'll bring somebody into your life that can help to tutor those kids. You see, God is a good God, and he doesn't delight to take you through hardship. He delights to lead you beside the still waters, to the green pastures, to restore the broken heart and the troubled soul. That's the ministry of the one that we come to. He's a wonderful Savior today. And I hope that you realize that because of that, we know that through all of these things, that wonderful Savior is drawing us more tightly to his bosom He's loving us more fully and he's calling us to love him more deeply and to trust him more implicitly. And when we do, we'll never be disappointed. And so today, if you find yourself up against a stump, proverbially speaking, and you don't know what to do, if any man among you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given unto him. God loves you, and so do we. I hope that you have 
a wonderful day. I hope you'll tune in tonight to the live stream of our midweek service. God bless you.